Welcome to video number two of what's in my bag. This video is going to be all about adventure gear. And I'm not talking about the types of boots and clothing I wear. This is gear to get you out and back safely. First and foremost, for any adventure, you need to think about hydration. You should be bringing some water with you, but for years, I have packed a life straw. I'm a huge fan of this because it works, but I'm also not a fan because you have to suck so hard to pull water through here. I find it's actually painful to try and get water through here, but I've used it quite a few times and it does work. I've actually drank water coming out of a mine shaft once on accident <laughs> through this exact life straw. Didn't get sick at all. I've upgraded to this bottle now. This was a gift that I absolutely love. It separates into two different pieces. You fill the bottom one and then compress it and on the bottom is a filter. This thing has been amazing. Another thing that I really like having in my bag is these little sport tablets. There's a bunch of different companies that make these, but it's just like a electrolyte and sugar tablet. And this can be great if you're ever stuck in the wilderness. For example, when I was stuck way up on the mountain behind Grand Duke Mine, that was a 47 kilometer hike out and being able to replace some sugars and electrolytes really helps in those situations. So one of these always lives in my bag. I always carry a multi-tool. <laughs> this, every adventurer should carry a multi-tool. I have a Leatherman was a gift from my grandfather and Leatherman is a great company. Lifetime warranty on all of their products. This has been in my pocket or bag for almost a decade and it's fixed and built a ton of things and not had any problems. I did break, unfortunately, the tip off of the knife trying to pry an oyster off of a rock, but everything else works great. So I haven't justified replacing it quite yet. I always carry a way to start a fire. I usually have a lighter and a box of matches. And with the matches, I have, I'll have i melt a candle and then dip the end of the match in the wax. And then you're making yourself some waterproof matches. It's nice to always have a backup. You never know when you're going to need a fire. And then I always carry a roll of electrical tape. You can fix pretty much anything with electrical tape. This comes in handy for me for camera equipment more often than anything survival related, but it lives in the bag. Um, I always like to have some sort of map with me. This is just a backroads map book, not something I would bring on an adventure, but the map bag is really important. This is almost always in my bag because if I'm exploring somewhere, it's very typical. I'll meet a local that will offer me an old school map and then I can put it in this bag. Keeps it nice and safe and dry. With that, always a good compass. You don't have to worry about batteries. You don't have to worry about weather. Nothing. This compass will be good and reliable. I did take my compass and GPS and map courses when I was going through training for search and rescue, but anything that you want to learn about map compass gps you can learn online and it is actually a really fun thing to learn especially with a family it maybe make a scavenger hunt and send the kids out and it can be a great day and you can learn how to properly use map compass and gps so these always are in my bag i recently added a gps little garmin gps an e-trex 22x I know how to use this because of my training in search and rescue. I have yet to use it. Uh, I have it all loaded up with the maps and everything. And I figured I would pick this up for my Northern trip because I'm getting into some really dense forest here. And when I'm leaving the motorhome, oftentimes I don't know where I'm going. And as you've noticed so far, there's a lot of fog on the ocean here. So I wanted a way that I can navigate back if I get into some dense fog. So that's why I picked up the GPS. That's a new addition to my bag. The only other electronic I really carry is a spot. This is a spot gen three, and this is an emergency tracking beacon. I have two programmed uh, or yeah, two different 
programmed buttons that tells my family that I'm, they just say good to go for mine. And then you have uh, this button for assistance that is non-life-threatening. This one is life-threatening situation. That goes straight to search and rescue. I've never had to use that. Hopefully, I never will have to. There's a few different companies that make these. Um, Garmin makes an in-reach. A lot of people talk really highly about that. You can actually text message off of it. For me, when I'm out in the woods or on a trip out of cell phone reception, I don't want to be able to text. I want to be isolated in the wilderness. So this is the perfect uh, setup for me. And it's great for my family as well. My mom has paid for the, the subscription to this from the beginning. So that's amazing. Big thanks to my mom. I always carry now, this was an addition that got added in Mexico, sunscreen and a neck buff. These are great things to have because there's nothing worse than starting on a big trip and like an hour into it, you're dealing with the sun and it's a terrible day for the rest. So I always carry now with me some sunscreen. Another really important one is a first aid kit. I got this one when I was doing forest firefighting for BC and I just like the little kit that it comes in. So everything in here has been pretty much used and replenished over the years, but it's a great little kit and you can pick up a little first aid kit even at Walmart. So that's, and it's cheap. So definitely want to add that to your, to your bag. Now let's talk about animals in particular here in the North. I'm dealing with grizzly bears. A lot of people ask about my gun. I'll get to that very last because that is a last resort in an animal situation. Bear spray, that's your number one. This is the most reliable. It's the easiest to get to. You can strap it on wherever and it's right there. My, I have clients in uh, Vancouver. They're called Fence Fast. They're an agri agriculture management company. They deal with all kinds of bear prevention stuff. Last year, they hooked me up with bear spray and bear bangers. So if you guys need any bear prevention or animal prevention stuff, you can check them out online. But I also carry two different types of bear bangers. I'm a big fan of these because they're super lightweight and easy to use. You just thread it in to the pen like this and it's ready to go. You can clip that on wherever is nice and easy to use. And then it's super easy. You just pull this pin back, let it go, and it's going to fire this off. I carry uh, just a whistle and an exploding kind. So if you are getting yourself some bear spray or bear bangers, make sure you research how to properly use them. A lot of people think you're supposed to shoot these at the bear. That's not how you do it because it very possibly will go past the bear, explode behind it, and then he's going to be running full speed right towards you. So <laughs> whatever you're going to get for bear prevention or animal prevention, research how to use it properly. Finally, a lot of people ask about this gun when I'm in the north. This is not any type of special gun. It's just a regular 12 gauge. I have my restricted pal and just my regular possession acquisitions license. Um, I didn't go with a restricted gun because it comes with a big headache in Canada. So this is the smallest shotgun, the smallest 12 gauge that you can legally carry with just a regular pal. It's made by Churchill and this was just the cheapest 12 gauge that I could buy. It was like 300 and something dollars. It's just for bears and it's a really durable gun. I can't believe for the price point. It's been in all kinds of weather, got really, really wet packing it around in the rain, and it really only fires a couple shells per year. I'll put through it just to make sure it's working good, then clean it and oil it, and off it goes again. Never had to use it for an animal, hopefully never will, but if the situation comes, it's with me. Anyways, that's my adventure gear to be out in the wilderness safe and sound. This is just what works for me. And I didn't acquire all of this stuff before starting adventuring. This is stuff that I have acquired over the years and 
I've added and taken things as needed as well. So whatever situation you're going out in, just pack what is going to work best for you. <laughs> you also don't want to over pack. Like I don't carry all this stuff with me when I go out, just what I need. Anyways, I hope that answered some of your guys' questions. If you have any more, drop them down in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, everybody.